How's it going guys? Welcome back to another exciting video. And then in this video, we're going to continue where we left off in the last video. So previously we took a look at the application we're going to be building. And then we also did some of the initial setup for Flutter. So we got it installed on our operating system, whether you're using Windows or Mac OS. And now we're going to go ahead and make use of that. So right now I have VS Code open and I just have this newsfeed folder I made and that's what I opened up. So in my case, it's this right here. So kind of I have a very deep structure with my folders. I like to be organized, but basically just create some folder, open it up, and then that's where you can work on your project. So first thing I wanna do is I just wanna set up that server. So essentially we have a Django server we're gonna have on our backend, and then that's where we're gonna make our API request to. And then you can go, um, you can basically find that at github.com slash linkedweb slash simple dash server, which I'm going to put in the description. So that way it's easy for you guys to go ahead and find this. Just copy that link. And then you're going to want to have your terminal open inside of here. And then essentially I'm going to have a folder, which is going to be our flutter application. And then I'm going to have another one, which is going to be our simple server. So while navigated inside of here, I want to do git clone and then paste that link. And then that way I can clone that project. So here it is. And then let's go ahead and walk through how we set this up. So I put some little bullet points to make this a little easier. So first we want to clone it and then we want to set up a virtual environment. And maybe one step I could have maybe also put in here is first you kind of want to navigate into that folder. Then you want to do all this stuff. Maybe that's something I'll add in just to make it a little more clear. But essentially right now we want to navigate into simple server. So I'm going to do CD and then simple dash server. That way I'm inside of there. And then now here we have all of these different files. And now the first thing I want to do is I want to create a virtual environment. So that's this right here. I'm going to paste that in there. So we're going to go ahead, create our virtual environment. And then also I'm using Python 3.7. So I'm going to just go ahead and show that Python three dash dash version. So if you're using this version or later, you'll be good pretty much. So just to kind of show that. So now the next step is we want to basically activate our virtual environment. So that's this right here. So on the Mac OS, you're going to run this command on Windows. You're going to run this one right here. It's going to go back, paste that in there, activate my virtual environment. There we go. Now I see this VEM thing right here. That means I'm in my virtual environment. So let's go to the next step. We want to install our packages. So we're going to do that with this command right here, pip install dash r requirements.txt. And then basically this requirements.txt, the only really important things are Django, Django REST framework and pillow. So Django and Django REST framework is what we need to make our Django REST API. And then pillow is just so that we can upload images. So now let me go ahead, run pip install dash r requirements.txt. That way we can install our packages. And then after that, we're basically gonna make our migrations. Although I don't think there's gonna be any migrations to make just cause I think the migration files also ended up being pushed up to this GitHub. So in this migrations, yeah. So there's this like 0001 initial.py. So that command's actually not gonna do anything. We already have our migrations. But basically, I mean, you can run this anyway, and then you can migrate to the server. And we're just using the SQLite server, which is the default one. So I'm going to do Python manage.py make migrations, if I spell that right, make migrations. And then here, yeah, there's no changes detected, which is kind of what I expected. So then you're going to migrate to your SQLite server. And then the next step is we want to create our super user, which we're going to do with this command right here. So let's go ahead and do that. Create super user. You're going to set some username. I'm just going to use Brian in my case. Some email, whatever you want to use. I'll just use this fake email and then just set up your password. And now with the super user, we're going to be able to log into an admin panel where then we can add posts. So right here is the link to that. And then in order to navigate to there, we have to run our server, which we're going to do with this command. So Python manage.py run server. That's going to run our backend server. And then I can go ahead, open this up, paste in this link so I can go into my admin panel. And now I can log in with that super user. 
And then from there, I can just go ahead and add some posts. So I'm gonna go click this add post button. And then essentially we can make, you can make as many posts as you want. So right now, um, basically these posts have a title, a user, an image, and then content. And then this user is just essentially just a string. It's not an actual user that created an account on a real application. You'd probably want that. Maybe you have some kind of foreign key right here for the user, which points to the actual user. And then you can also retrieve their name, but I just made things nice and simple. All right, and then in my downloads folder, I have a couple images, which I'm just gonna make use of. You can use whatever images you want. I just have some, I have these four random images. So you're gonna use this camping one first. So I'll just make a title, something like fun camping trip. This can be user John, and then uh, had a super fun time this weekend camping with the family. I don't know. You can write whatever you want. So we're going to create a few posts. And then essentially, we're going to move on once we do that. So next one, I'll use this club image. So super fun time last night or something. User can be, I don't know, Samantha, something random. And then for the content, Super fun time last night. So much fun. And let's go ahead. Just gonna make two more posts and then we're gonna move on from there. So there you go. Created my post. So now that's there. I can now just essentially log out. You can make as many posts as you want, be as creative as you want. And there we go, we have our backend server now created. So next step is basically I wanna now set up this Flutter front end. So I'm gonna stop running this server just cause we don't essentially need this server. So I'm just gonna deactivate this virtual environment, navigate back. So I'm in my sort of root directory here. And then now I'm gonna go ahead and create my Flutter project. So to create my Flutter project, I'm gonna run Flutter create and then the name of this project, which I'm gonna call Newsfeed. So that's gonna go ahead and create that for me. So we already see this right here. And then this is where we're gonna go ahead and kind of create our different files. So that kind of finished up. So I can quit out of that. And then the next thing I wanna do is I wanna run my emulator and then I wanna go ahead and see that project. So basically, oh, let me put this, where I want it. All right, so you're gonna open up Android Studio. You're gonna click on Configure AVD Manager. That's gonna go ahead, open this up, and then if you didn't create a virtual device, go ahead and do that. So I have this virtual device right here, which is the Nexus 5X. I'm gonna go ahead and run that. All right, so here's that virtual device. And basically, I'm just going to go ahead and use this terminal just to run that. So I'm going to navigate into where I have this project right here. So it's going to be inside of this Flutter app itself. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate into there. So in my case, it's going to be... Actually, I think I'm already navigated in there. Yeah, so I'm already navigated in here. So in my case, that's Workspace, YouTube App Projects, Newsfeed. And then essentially in here, I have that use feed um, Flutter app, and then I also have my simple server. So now I'm gonna wanna navigate into here. So into news feed, and then that's where I have all these different files, which are essentially these files right here. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and run this, and then we can go ahead and take a look at the default app that we get. So I can just do Flutter run while I'm inside of here. And then also while my emulator is open, and then that should go ahead and run this. So I'm going to give that a moment, and I'll kind of skip to where it gets launched. All right, so that went ahead and launched. So here's that default application that we get. And basically all this says is you have pushed the button this many times, and then whenever you click this, it increments by one. So that's our default app that we have. Now, in this video, I'm not going to really write any dark code quite yet. But one thing I will tell you is most of our code is going to be written inside of this 
a lib file, and by most, I mean like all of it. <laughs> so currently, by default, we just have this main.dart file, and then that goes ahead and runs this default application. And basically, in the next section, we're just going to remove all this code and kind of start from scratch, but this is what we have by default. And then basically what I want to do in this video is do kind of an overview of this app we're going to be building. And then in the next video, we're going to go ahead and actually start writing some Dart code. So hopefully you guys aren't too, too eager to start writing the Dart code. Don't worry, it will be happening soon, but that'll be in our next video. For now, let's go ahead and see kind of um, essentially what this app is going to look like. So I went ahead and made kind of a little diagram so that it's a little easier to kind of see this sort of app and how we structured things. So I'm going to have some kind of main dot dart class. So that's kind of what we get by default here. We have this main dot dart. And then essentially, I'm just going to use this to go ahead and run our app. So the app itself, I'm going to go ahead and put inside of a separate class. So basically, the main purpose of this main dot dart is just going to be to run our app. And then I'm going to kind of refactor that code to have our app in kind of a separate class. And we're going to be a little bit more organized. So that's something we can even see in this default project. There's this like run app function. And then this essentially is just running my app, which is this class right here, which is the app. So this run app basically just runs the app. It makes it present on your screen. And then essentially you can use your app. So this app right here is going to be our class. And then one thing we need to understand is that everything is going to be kind of made up of widgets. So that's kind of the way that we work with Flutter. So we're going to have different widgets and some widgets, they can have state. Some widgets don't have state. So if we actually take a look at our default app right now that we have, this right here is an example of something with state. Because when I click this button, we actually see this update. So basically, we're going to look into the whole concept of stateful versus stateless widgets. And essentially, we're going to want to make use of a stateful widget in order to actually kind of have this update. Because if this app right here, if it wasn't a stateful widget, if it was stateless, essentially, if we press this button, you could update some kind of value inside of this class, you might have some kind of like count um, attribute, which I'm sure this default app has something like that. So let's go ahead. So yeah, here we have like this int counter. So if this right here was a stateless app, you could still have this attribute and it could be updated whenever you click this button. But basically, whenever this re renders, it would kind of rebuild things. And even though that value is updated, we would not see it reflected here. So basically, we are going to make use of a stateful widget. We're going to see how you can kind of configure that. It's a little more complicated than um, you'd expect, but basically we're going to see how to do that. So that way, whenever this re-renders, we're going to go ahead and kind of have um, something that keeps track of our state itself, because in our case, we're going to have our posts. And whenever we go ahead and retrieve that data, we're going to want to update our state to basically have our posts. And then whenever you create new posts, whenever you refresh, you want to kind of retrieve those new posts. You want to have some kind of state, essentially. So if I go back to my diagram, essentially, we're going to have this app, which is going to be re-rendering. And then it's going to have kind of like a separate class, which is going to be its state. And then in here, we're going to have kind of like the posts, which is going to be like our list of posts. By default, it's going to be empty. When we refresh, it's going to fill up with some data. So if we didn't have this, it doesn't matter if we were to put like posts, if we were to update our attribute, once our app re-renders, it'll just essentially, we wouldn't see that. So we need to make use of that stateful widget. So we're going to have this sort of app state, and that's what's going to have our posts. And it's going to keep track of that state for us. Now we're also going to have some different classes that we're going to make use of. So we're going to have this material app class, which is going to have a scaffold. So if we look at the Flutter documentation, so you can go to the Flutter documentation with flutter.dev slash docs, or you can just go to flutter.dev and click this docs button. And from there, we have this sort of widgets catalog. And then if you kind of go down, there's this like material components section. So this right here is like visual behavior, um, behavioral and motion rich widgets implementing the material design guidelines. So that's something that we're going to go ahead and make use of. And that's essentially where this material app thing comes from. 
And then with this material app, you have the scaffold, which is something that we're gonna make use of because it's very handy for this simple application that we're making. So inside of the documentation, we have this scaffold, which um, basically the description here is implements the basic material design visual layout structure. This class provides APIs for showing drawers, snack bars, and bottom sheets. So essentially this right here is something that we're gonna wanna take use of. And then when we, when we go here, we can like kind of take a look at this constructor and then this will kind of help us see some of the different things that we can pass to this scaffold. So we have things like an app bar. So that's gonna be that top bar and our default app actually even has this, this app bar. We're also gonna want a floating action button. That's another thing we're gonna need. And then we're also gonna technically have another class which will help position this kind of in the middle here. And then we're gonna have a bottom app bar and then we're also gonna have like our body. So if I go back to my little diagram, essentially our scaffold, it's gonna have that top app bar, it's gonna have our body, our bottom app bar, and then the action button. And technically, um, technically it's also gonna have kind of something that helps us position the, app, the action button itself, but I just wanted to keep this a little simpler. And these are kind of like the main components. So then this app bar essentially is just an app bar component, which you can also even look in the documentation. We have like this app bar class. And then from there, that self has kind of a constructor where we can pass a title to it. And then the title is gonna be like a widget. So we have that, we're also gonna have the body, which we're gonna have basically posts. We're gonna have a separate class, which is our posts. We're gonna have a container wrapping it so we can have some kind of like margin around it. And then this posts, it's basically gonna have a list of posts. And then we're also gonna have kind of like a separate class, which is gonna represent our post model. So each of these post models basically will be an instantiation of a class where we have our title, our image, the content and user kind of like we saw in our admin panel, that's how our data is represented. And we're gonna have this sort of post model class, which is gonna sort of take over that data. And then we're gonna have a list of that. And then that's gonna be our posts. And then also our app state itself, it's going to go ahead and utilize this list, which is gonna be our list of our post models, which Basically, we're gonna make our HTTP request to our server. We're gonna get back our JSON data and we're gonna organize it in this fashion. And then we're gonna have our app state basically update to be this. So that's kind of how that works. And then we're gonna have our bottom app bar, which is just gonna be a bottom app bar class. And then that it's, it's gonna have some kind of property, which is a shape. And then that's how we're gonna get that very particular shape of that bottom app bar that we saw in the overview video. And essentially that's gonna be this kind of like circular notched rectangle class. So we're gonna kind of make use of this property along with this class in order to get our bottom app bar to look exactly how we want. And then of course we're gonna have our action button where we're gonna have this like on pressed named parameter as you'd call it. And that's gonna be a callback function that when we click, it's gonna go ahead and make a request to our server. And then we're gonna get back our data. We're gonna update our app state and then we're gonna re-render our app and we're gonna basically see our app updated. So that's kind of an overview of what we're trying to accomplish. Hopefully this diagram makes it a little easier to see what we're gonna try to do. And then in the next video, we're gonna go ahead and kind of start diving into our Dart code and seeing how we can sort of accomplish this right here. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy this video. Make sure to leave this video a like, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this content, click that notification bell if you wanna receive notifications whenever a new video comes out. And then we're gonna go ahead and see how we can write some of this code out in our next video. So I'll see you guys there.